Hello Space Fans and welcome to another edition of Space Fan News. This week, NASA announces that the successor to Hubble, the James Webb Space Telescope, has finished assembly at Goddard Space Flight Center and is ready for testing. And in case you haven't heard, there's a supermoon this weekend. And finally, some small changes coming to Space Fan News. So did you guys notice anything strange about the format of last week's SFN? I had to cut out the intro and I only had two stories when usually I try to have three. Well, after I had recorded last week's episode, which included the story I'm about to show you now on JWST, I went to NASA's website to get some images and screenshots outlining the story, but all I found were press releases talking about the completion and testing of the primary mirror segments. There was nothing really on the completion of the assembly of the entire telescope. And now, and the way that I had read the announcements that were coming out last week, they were talking about everything being done, not just the primary mirror segments. So I began to wonder, WTF? Since most of my sources for that story were from outside NASA, and I always like to try and check with NASA before I post anything, I began to question whether the spacecraft assembly was actually complete or were we just talking about the primary segments here. Now the main source that most of these websites used was a press conference that was held by NASA at Goddard last week and I'm not privy to those since I'm just some guy with a space news show and I don't have a journalist background so I wasn't invited. Therefore, I couldn't really verify what was said. I could only really go by what I read on space.com and other websites. So last week, just prior to posting, I got cold feet and I decided I would not post that story until I asked around to some of my JWST colleagues for clarification and that I would just wait to post the story until I found out for sure what was going on. So I cut out everything about it from the recording last week and that made everything look kind of wonky, but it was too late for me to re-record it. It was late at night and I really wanted to get the uh, episode out and uh, I didn't want, I couldn't do the whole thing all over again. So now I verified everything and the story I had originally written was true. So here's the story as I recorded it last week. Finally, at long last, the next flagship space telescope and successor to the mighty Hubble Space Telescope has finally been completely assembled. The James Webb Space Telescope was built in many locations around the US, but its components like the mirror segments, the cameras, spectrographs, and all the electronics and power buses were assembled in a massive clean room at the Goddard Space Flight Center. And this week, at a big event held at Goddard, they announced that the assembly is complete. Now what's next is they're going to ship it to the Johnson Space Flight Center, where they will put it through most of its testing. There's a giant vacuum chamber there that was left over from the Apollo mission in the 60s, and they refurbished it to use it to test JWST. Now they need to get this part right because there is no going out there to fix it once it's deployed. So the vacuum chamber will help them put the telescope through its paces in an environment as close to actual space as they can get. They're going to shake it, open it, close it, shake it some more, put loudspeakers against it to simulate a loud rocket launch, and most importantly, they're going to focus it. Now tragically, this is something NASA did not do with Hubble before it launched in 1990. Now, some of you may remember that the first Hubble repair mission was sent to fix an aberration in the primary mirror that wasn't built to specifications. Had they focused the mirror on the ground prior to launch, they would have found that out. So, because JWST is going to the L2 point a million and a half kilometers away, there's no chance of fixing it if something goes wrong. So, the next phase of the JWST construction plan is to test every possible thing they can before launching it. It's going to be an exciting year for JWST. Launch is coming up October 2018, and I'll make sure to keep you posted on all the developments as they happen in 2017. So now I'm just going to reiterate, I am so glad they're going to take the time to focus that thing. I can't believe no one did that back for Hubble back when it was being built in the 80s. It just seemed like some basic stuff you do before you launch a telescope. So I'm glad they're doing that. Okay, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this next story because quite frankly I'm getting sick of hearing about it, but you may have heard that there is a supermoon this weekend. Well, what's a supermoon? All it is, is it relates to the fact that the moon's orbit around the Earth is not circular. This means there are times when it's closer to Earth than at other times. And sometimes, like this year, it gets really close, which will be the closest it's gotten to Earth 
since 1948. So instead of rehashing what has already been said by an expert, here's Dr. Noah Petro from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter mission explaining what a supermoon is. He did this on Facebook Live earlier today. So a supermoon, just for quick definition to get everybody on board, is the supermoon is the full moon, the one full moon of the year that occurs closest to the Earth. Now, so that's going to be happening Monday morning. Uh, uh, as we know, the orbit of the moon around the Earth is not a perfect circle. What's special about what's going to happen Monday is the closest full moon, as you said, since 1948. These supermoons appear about 14% larger in the night sky, but also about 30% brighter. So if you're trained at looking at the moon, you'll notice a difference. Now, if you're interested, you should watch the whole thing on Facebook. The link is in the description box below, and the guys at Goddard did a really great job on this feed. Now, a lot of people are asking, well, when is the best time to see the thing? Well, Whenever you can see a full moon is a good time is a good time to see it. So you'll be able to go outside this weekend, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. You'll have a very close to a full moon. The actual closeness happens early Sunday morning uh, on the Eastern time zone. But you know wherever you are, get up and look out and see the moon. It'll be real. It'll be fourteen percent bigger than usual. And I, the guy Noah. Uh, Dr. Petro was advising that people get out their telescopes and look at it. To be quite honest, if you've ever looked at a full moon through a telescope, I don't think that's a great idea. They get really, really bright. In fact, whenever I've looked at a full moon through a telescope, I have had to like look around and blink my eyes for a while because I was basically blind. It's so bright. It's better to just look at it through with your naked eyes. Just look up like we do every week. Just keep looking up and look at the full moon. That's the best way to see it. Alternatively, maybe a pair of binoculars, but a, a telescope, it's a little bit overkill here. So all I can really add to the discussion here is that the moon is physically closer to the Earth, which if you live near the coast like I do, then you can see higher high tides and low tides. And why is that? Well, the gravity effect follows the inverse square law, which means that it gets stronger or weaker as the inverse of the distance between the two bodies squared. So besides making me sound really smart, all that basically means is that when numbers in the denominator get small, d in this case, the overall number gets big. And when numbers in the denominator get big, the overall number gets small. So there's a little bit of fraction fun for this Friday. I like to call it Friday Fraction Fun. Friday Fraction. Friday Fraction Fun. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and finally, after such a rough week following the election, I want to share some geeky cuteness with you guys. Now, I was sent this wonderful video by a space fan news Patreon patron, Ivan M., who recorded his 20-month-old son showing his awesome knowledge of astronomy. Check it out. Where's the sun? Boy, where's Earth? Boy, where's Neptune? Good boy, where's Uranus? Good boy, where's Mars? Good boy, where's Jupiter? Good boy. <laughs> that kid is only 20 months old. That is so great. And I gotta say that after the week we've all had following this election here in the United States, I personally needed to see this video because it renewed my hope. My hope in the human race and in our future. If there are kids out there like this, learning science and doing it well, then there will be citizens occupying our planet who are thoughtful and able to think critically. And I just really needed to know that this week. <laughs> so please watch the whole video. It is really impressive. Uh, the link is in the description box below. Thank you, Ivan M, for sharing it with me. It was a real refreshing thing to see. <laughs> okay, before I go, I wanted to let you guys know that this episode will be the last one that I post on the Space Fan News YouTube channel. The show isn't going anywhere. Everything will stay the same, but I realized it was a mistake to try to spin off SFN onto its own channel because it split my viewership. And some people were also complaining about having to subscribe to two channels and they were seeing duplicate notifications of the same video. I'm leaving everything where it is. I'm not deleting the old channel. All of the posts are going to stay there. All the links will still work. Uh, I'm going to leave it where it is. But if you want to catch SFN every week, new episodes, they will only be posted on the Deep Astronomy channel, not the Space Fan News channel, starting next Friday, November 18th. 
Now, initially I did that because I thought, well, people that only care about SFN would be able to subscribe to a channel and only get content they wanted instead of all the other stuff. But I found out you can do that by just subscribing to the Space Fan News playlist, and you'll get notified whenever new videos are added to that playlist. So you won't get spammed from other videos or the Hangouts or everything else that's happening on Deep Astronomy. If all you care about Space Fan News, you'll get notified by that uh, subscription to the news, Space Fan News playlist. And the link to the playlist is in the description box, and you can also see it's very prominently displayed on the Deep Astronomy uh, homepage as well. Okay, well, that is it for this week, Space Fans. Special thanks to the Planets Foundation for sponsoring SFN this month. Thanks to all SFN Patreon patrons who keep SFN on the air. Couldn't do it without you. Thank all of you for watching. And as always, keep looking up. Good boy, what about the space shuttle? Where's the space shuttle? Good boy. Where are the solid rocket boosters? Good boy. Where's the other solid rocket booster? Good boy. What about the external fuel tank? Such a good boy.